Hello and welcome to the Nation Jandela with me, Eleno Abdullah. Now, Jalena Digital Nagara or Jandela is the government's plan to expand the reach of the internet to every corner of Malaysia in preparation for 5G technology. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic revealed several areas of improvement required in the country's digital infrastructure. One that requires the telecommunications industry to work together to achieve rather lofty targets within an accelerated timeline. Now, among them, Digitelecommunications has provided its commitment to advancing this agenda by connecting customers to what matters most. Now, in today's episode, we have the pleasure of speaking to Alban Muti, CEO of DG Telecommunications, who will share with us some of the plans and challenges in this journey. Hi, Alban. How are you doing today? Hi, Elaine. Good. Thanks Thank for having me on the show. Thanks for joining us here. Now, we have had several weeks of talking about Jandela with MTMC, with several other telcos as well. It's a, a big agenda to try to narrow that digital gap that became really apparent uh, after the pandemic hit, where a lot of people were uh, not able to stay connected. So Jandela is trying to create that future for Malaysians for it to be progressive. Now let's go to the first question. Jandela aspires to provide this connectivity to all. Mm -hmm. Now this is a big you know, mm -hmm. aim all. Uh, share with us how DG has progressed so far in helping Jandela achieve this target. Yeah, Elaine, thanks a lot. Um, so yes, it is an ambitious, uh, very ambitious program. Mm. Uh, it is one, as you've heard from the MCMC chair and the rest of the CEOs, uh, that this is something that we have committed to doing as part of ensuring that connectivity reaches out to as many Malaysians as possible. Mm. Um, connectivity, as, as easy as it sounds, is actually quite hard to, to get it right. Um, and we've been at it for a while. And I think the Janela program actually focuses on ensuring that the people who don't have 4G coverage or good internet experience on mobile mm -hmm. is able to get it. Right. What we need to probably set as a context is that uh, internet connectivity in Malaysia, most people experience it on the mobile. Yes, correct. And so therefore, it's important to actually do uh, uh, what you just mentioned, which is to ensure that the program is able to deliver. Mm -hmm. So what we have done, uh, DG has done is actually, let me just say that maybe for 2020, we've actually been able to, to hit some, some, most of our targets, almost 100% of our targets were wow. hit in terms of upgrading right. uh, the network. Um, and also the industry was able to upgrade about 16,000 uh, sites, mm -hmm. um, you know, approximately also add a slightly shy of 1,000 new uh, sites to provide that coverage. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and demand continues to be there. So mm -hmm. you know, when you as soon as you as soon as you start to provide 4G coverage into the into these areas, more is required. More is required. Right. So you could see that during the um, MCO period, and we all went through a, a very strange uh, <laughs> 2020. Yes. Um, and you know, there was demand immediately there. Uh, even during the first phase of MCO, yes. you could see that there's almost a 30 percent uh, increase yes. uh, in um, data traffic. Yeah. And during the MCO itself, there was about close to 20 percent spike in traffic. Right. Uh, average, you know, Malaysian. If you just look at all the operators put together, is slightly shy of 20 gig per person. That's a lot of data right. uh, that is being consumed by a, a mobile uh, customer. Right. So you can then, you know, relate that to the capacity requirements that we need to have. So we, we're quite happy with what we've been able to achieve as part of the program. I think it is an ambitious program, but it's probably something that needs to be done. Uh, and we are committed to making sure that we're able to to continue to grow in the areas that need that coverage. Mm but also look at areas that need capacity. So it's not just about rural areas, it's also about key market centers. Mm. As usage patterns shifts yes. uh, during the MCO, you know, yeah. most of us stayed home. It was home. very clear. That most of us stayed home. Wherever that you had coverage, you didn't have people. Wherever exactly. you didn't have uh, enough bandwidth, you had too many people. Uh, exactly. So, yeah. so you, you had, we had to also shift our focus, yeah. and our teams also had to, to you know, change their way they looked at, at designs of the network as well. So those yeah. are things that we also improved along the way. Yeah. So how, how do you guys keep up with this? Because uh, like you said, you know, at the moment you upgrade, uh, you, you, are, you are already having to do uh, plan for the next upgrade. Uh, what are some of your network rollout and upgrade plans for this coming year, 2021? Yeah, good question, Elaine. So, so for 2021, you know, we'll start off with the basic network infrastructure that we put in place. So we have a good starting point. So yeah. in 2020, we really were, you know, did a good job. We we're quite happy where we achieved. Yeah. We went into a new um, agreement with our network uh, provider, uh, which is uh, ZTE. We went into a new phase with them where we tried to modernize our network. Mm. Um, you know, as you said, you know, demand goes up, but also equipment becomes you know, less and less relevant given the requirements that are and the capacity demand. So we need to upgrade that. So we've gone on a huge infrastructure uh, RAN modernization. Mm. I'm trying not to give all the technology terms uh, so that people understand. Right. And it's really looking at a site level, how much more further upgrades do we need to do right. to be able to cater for that demand. The other thing we've done is it is continuous 
redesigning and reviewing uh, the traffic. Mm. So, you know, pockets of traffic which shifts, mm. we need to be on the ground, we need to be able to optimize the traffic, mm. we need to utilize the spectrum that we have in mm. the right way to ensure that customers are able to um, get the experience that they're expecting. Um, and we also need to educate the customers. So we also need to go out there and also inform customers when those upgrades are being done mm. uh, so that they can have, you know, move from, you know, 3G to 4G. Right. So, uh we be going on a short break in a, in a short while, but uh, what can customers expect from these network improvements? Because we understand that you know upgrades needs to happen, but how does this uh, relate to the the experience itself? Yeah, so so that's that's an interesting uh, point. Uh, so it, it comes back to a couple of things. One is you know the upgrades will give you the technical advancement. Right. The device is also a big uh, thing, and so you know you talked about another thing about Jandela that the chairman also mentioned is the 3G sunset. You know Correct. we're moving from shutting down 3G into 4G. Yeah. That's a big good, big and right decision because that also requires the right devices in the hands of the customers, which will improve experience. What are DG's customer profiles on still on 3G? Yeah, so, so we have a, a couple of um, uh, customers still on 3G, but, but we are not worried about that migration. Right. We're more worried about um, the ability for customers to, to it's not about the fallibility of the devices anymore. Mm -hmm. It's about getting the customers to actually make that shift, mm. right? So 4G has been around for quite a while. Yes, correct. But still, you have a lot of customers still using uh, 3G. One could be affordable levels of the devices at that given point of time. Yeah. That has dramatically changed, so yeah. we think that adoption will be there. The other one's availability of network, and I think that's something that we are doing uh, as part of the Jindal Love Program. Right. We'll take a short breather right now. When we come back, let's talk about DG being recently recognized uh, as the fastest mobile network in Malaysia. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with that and more. Mili is a university student in Kuala Lumpur. She needs to visit her grandmother in her hometown next week. However, Mili has an exam scheduled at the same time. She plans to revise her lessons during the trip through online learning via video. Mili is worried about unstable internet access while traveling. Introducing Jandela a government initiative to improve Malaysia's communications infrastructure and 4G coverage. This move will reduce the digital divide and enable cities, suburbs and rural areas to receive better quality broadband services. Jandela will be rolled out in phases. The 3G network will be gradually terminated as the 4G network is expanded to give Malaysians access to high-speed mobile lines throughout the country. With Jandela, people like Mei Li can enjoy uninterrupted online services all the way back to her hometown. This digital transformation will raise the people's economic status and advance the country's socio-economy progress. Hello, thanks for staying with us on The Nation. Jandela, you're still with me, Elena Abdullah. And in the studio, I'm speaking to Albert Muti, CEO of DG Telecommunications. And we're speaking to him about connecting customers to what matters most. Now, Albert, uh, we mentioned earlier about the whole uh, big picture of the Jandela program and how the transformation uh, would include a lot of upgrading of uh, existing infrastructure in order for us to get there. And we talked a little bit about the experience of what that means in terms of the upgrading of the inf infrastructure. And and you also spoke a little bit about 3G sunsetting and the devices that comes with it. Now, uh, before we talk a little bit more about the sunset of 3G and how DG's customers are affected in that, let's talk about DG being uh, recognized by Ookla as the fastest mobile network in Malaysia based on this Q3, Q4 2020 analysis report. Could you share with us how uh, DG achieved this? Yeah, Elaine, thanks a lot. Um, first of all, grateful for the recognition. I think it's great. Uh, and it also goes out to the team uh, mm. that has been you know, tirelessly working on improving the network mm. in a year which was very strange. You yes. know, and uh, traffic patterns were shifting. Um, we invested in the network. I think firstly, we really made a decision to invest and continue to invest despite uh, COVID-19 uh, causing challenges in, in, in Malaysia. Yeah. Um, and that was also a right decision because we also had to shift our strategy a little bit because the pattern of traffic changed. Yeah. Um, and so we, we did definitely did an upgrade. So the team and our partners did a great job in uh, ensuring that we're able to deploy that. Mm. Um, but it is something that we also believe uh, is not a one, you know, you, know, you solve it for the first time and mm. then that's it. Yeah. It has to be a continuous uh, monitoring, continuous improvement. 
Um, so I also always tell the team there will be certain days when you know, we're not the fastest mm. and then certain days where we are the fastest. Mm. Uh, we just need to make sure that what we are really driving is consistent network experience. Exactly. And I think um, that's something that we have taken as a key position for the brand mm. uh, for a long time. And we want to make sure that we commit at least our customers to give consistent network experience that they can get whatever they need to do uh, at the time they need to do done. You know, I, exactly. I mean, I think you, you hit the nail on the head when you talk about consistency uh, because uh, the pandemic showed us that, you know, just a one-off trying to ensure that we are all safe is not sufficient. Right. Yeah. It is a long-haul process. It's a long-term commitment in order for us to be able to achieve uh, that, that goal of uh, together right. being able to experience that quality. Now, uh, internet is set to become a third uh, utility uh, along with water and electricity or that's the hope uh, that MTMT is working towards as well as with the telco yep. industry. Now what does this mean to consumers? Why is this important and how can we achieve this? What role do we play? Yeah, so so actually it's, uh, it's fantastic that the government is uh, being able to push it for uh, uh, ut it to be a utility. Um, and, and there are countries that are globally have gone this direction. Mm. And uh, it is the right direction to take, and it's actually something that's been in discussions for many, many years, where yeah. they were talking about should this be a utility or not. Mm. And uh, it's good to see that some of the states have now adopted into yeah. what MCMC and the ministry has been pushing. So it's great. Why is it so important? It's, it uh, actually allows much better uh, speed of delivery of the network mm. in, uh, in the market. It also protects the interest of the customer. You know, so utility today, if, you know, if somebody you know, um, disconnects the utility, uh, it is an issue. Yep. Um, and that's the same with connectivity. So if you think about it, during the pandemic, mm. if connectivity was, you know, cables were dug out of the ground mm. or, or, or stations were shut, right. it would affect uh, consumers, especially Malaysians sitting at home, trying to work from home, study yep. from home for school, yep. they would be impacted. Right. So it's very important for it to be treated as a utility, mm. uh, but it also shows that we need to now have the opportunity to work with states, mm. um, local government agencies, mm. uh, regulator, of mm. course, to ensure that now we're able to deploy much quicker mm. uh, and solve these connectivity problems. Uh, so all of us are working together in, in that aspect. So it's great. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely supporting it to be treated as a utility. And I think as you will see now more and more states and, and the operators will start working together with MCMC on making sure that that happens. I really like the idea that we are working together in a collaborative manner. I think, uh, uh, like you know, I, I, I sound like a broken record when I talk about the pandemic actually revealing a lot about what is priority, what is necessary, yeah. and what are the things that we should put focus on. I think uh, the digital sort of infrastructure has taken a backseat for a very long time simply because people always say that oh I don't have the capital yet I don't have to invest in that yet yeah. so that yet it became very apparent that you can't put it as a yet it has to be a priority now mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about uh, the next uh, agenda which is the 3G sunset now um, you did mention that there are a number of DG customers who are still on 3G how are you encouraging that switch to 4G yeah, Elaine, before I go into that, can I just go back one yeah. on the question on, on uh, you know, the working together mm. uh, and the digital push. Mm. Um, part of that is also collaboration within the industry. Mm. Um, so, you know, during the pandemic, you could also see that the industry came together, uh, together with the regulator, to actually solve some of the problems uh, and the cross-collaboration in, in sites, mm. in ensuring that, you know, if somebody, you know, you gave an example right before we started, if brand A has coverage and brand B doesn't have coverage, you know, why can't you all work together? Yeah. That's actually been expedited uh, right. in 2020. So it's, I'm happy to say that it's been a fantastic year of, of collaboration within the industry players mm -hmm. as well. Now, 3G Sunset is also gonna require a lot of collaboration. Yep. As you can see, first thing is to educate uh, the consumers mm. on the need to shift. Right. Um, there's also then uh, a lot of work being, being done at a site level, you know, where we share infrastructure. Right. Uh, and we start to ensure that we are able to have uh, migration of 3G to 4G. Mm -hmm. From a technology perspective, mm -hmm. that needs to be done. And that's basically capital investments, yeah. changing the equipment, modernizing. And then, you know, based on the capacity requirements, you also have to put fiber to the site. Right. Uh, but the bigger part of it is also making sure that the whole ecosystem is there. So if you look at what MCMC in the industry is trying to do is to educate consumers about moving from 3G to 4G. Mm -hmm the difference that they will experience, the, the, the better quality that they will get, stable network, mm. you know, they can do things that they want to do, you mm. know, for everything from studying to games to videos to, you know, following the news, everything. Mm. Um, and and it's a, it's, it's, it is a longer process, mm. uh, but that's why we've also set some bold ambitions in making sure that that happens. Right. 
Um, and we are, we are working with uh, the regulator and all the operators almost um, on a every two weeks uh, basis to actually yeah. monitor, to yeah. see whether are there things that we need uh, to, be, to escalate, uh, to get support, mm -hmm. um, where we get help from the regulator or from industry uh, partners to be able to deploy something faster. Facilitate In it. fact, r this morning we came from such a meeting. So right. I'm coming from such a meeting with the chairman and the rest of the CEOs in the industry just talking about some of those progress reports. You know, are we progressing the right direction? So it's a very hands-on uh, meeting, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm sure this is yeah. uh, this is and no so small. So right before meeting you, uh, we came from that meeting. So if I look a little bit stressed, uh, that's also <laughs> a bit of the reason. Right? Which gives uh, takes me to a break, to, so that you can de-stress for yeah. a few minutes. Uh, we'll come back with more questions with regards to uh, some of the progresses in terms of how we are helping narrow that digital gap with the B40 community. Stay tuned. We'll be back with that and more. Mutu is a senior citizen living in the suburbs. At home, he spends a lot of time online connecting with his grandchildren who live in the city. When Mutu goes downstairs to get a recipe from his wife, the internet access is disrupted and his video call is cut off. Introducing Jendela, a government initiative to improve Malaysia's communications infrastructure and broadband coverage. This move will reduce the digital divide and enable cities, suburbs and rural areas to receive better quality broadband services. Jandela will be rolled out in phases and will involve the improvement, expansion and connectivity of high-speed coverage. This will ensure widespread coverage and connectivity nationwide. Malaysians will be able to access high-speed fixed and mobile broadband throughout the country. Additionally, all fibre service providers will continue to lend their support by upgrading their network capacity and deploying more base stations to meet the increase in 4G and 5G traffic. This will pave the way for future technology adoptions such as wireless and fixed wireless access and 5G to achieve the country's digital agenda. With Jandela increasing the reach of fiber optic services, Mutu can upgrade his internet services and get the latest internet hardware such as mesh Wi-Fi. He will be able to serve the internet anywhere in his house without any service disruption. This digital transformation will raise the people's economic status and advance the country's socio-economy progress. Hello, thanks once again for staying with us on The Nation Jandela with me, Elena Abdullah, in the studio and speaking to Alban Muti, CEO of DG Telecommunications. Alban, uh, we've had a very interesting conversation today with regards to DG's plans, Jandela, how we are trying to achieve that uh, narrowing of the digital uh, divide that uh, is quite apparent in sort of geographical areas, mm -hmm. whether you're in a city centre or if you're in rural areas, uh, you will experience very different experiences when you're using your devices. Um, we talked about the third uh, utility for telecommunications communications and we're looking forward to seeing that happen so that we can uh, be assured like mm -hmm. you said be protected uh, in being able to stay connected uh, now we are moving uh, away from 3g we're sunsetting that uh, 4g has been here for some time but we're also gearing up for 5g mm -hmm. so tell us what about 5g what can uh, consumers expect from 5g uh, once it's uh, going to be available right so I think you know I, we just talked about 3G sunset and moving to 4G. Mm. Uh, we talked about consistent network experience. Mm. Um, so most services, almost every service that anyone wants to use today mm. on 4G that you can get on the speeds that you can get on 4G, mm. and the capacity that you can uh, cater for 4G is more than sufficient uh, for handling videos and everything else. It's not like you know like um, MCMC chairman always says it's not like the video can move faster with you know a different technology. Right. It is built for the capability and the experience. Yeah. Um, when 5G comes, we, we look at 5G as an opportunity to, for businesses to start using 5G first, mm. uh, B2B solutions, uh, things like ports, things like infrastructure, mm. automation, mm. Um, manufacturing. That's where we believe that, that 5G will start. We've also seen that in many um, uh, other countries where they start with pockets of um, 5G on right. business focus. 
There is, of course, also a fixed wireless access capability mm. uh, where uh, customers who don't have fiber to the homes will be able to use fixed wireless access, and mm -hmm. that is done today on 4G. Mm -hmm. It'll be done on 5G in the future. Right. So I think there is some potential there. Mm -hmm. Our focus on Jandela right now is to ensure that we close that gap, mm -hmm. as you talked about, mm -hmm. in areas where we're trying to move from 3G to 4G. Mm -hmm. That itself will be a huge experience uh, improvement for, for many customers. Yeah and also free up a lot of capability for them to use it. Yeah. Now, I, I mentioned earlier that Malaysia is progressing to be this digital nation. Um, so how does DG in, in this sort of journey help in reducing that gap for the underserved, the underprivileged, the B40 community? We just heard about Permakasa being announced uh, with uh, 20 billion uh, ringgit in terms of the package aid, uh, and one of it includes you know, helping the B40 with uh, connectivity as well. Yeah. Yeah, very important, Kirsten, uh, Elaine. And so let me just start by saying that, you know, last year, industry also worked on a couple of areas to support B14. Mm. Um, we went out there with um, uh, data that was being given to customers mm, uh, yes. to help them for productivity and education Correct. during the period of time. We then also did uh, to support uh, students who are going through um, SPM, STPM, and also undergrad students that mm. were able to get plans at a lower prices. Right. So I would like to touch on affordability first. I think that that whole element of making sure that there are various affordable levels for the various segments of society mm. is super important that we address that. Mm. Um, and that then, you know, your B40 question, that's also the availability of then devices. Yeah. The, the device prices has really come down. Yeah. There's also a lot of um, uh, devices that are being sold in the market mm. uh, at the various levels that are catering for the different segments and affordable levels. Mm. Um, yesterday, per uh, the, the announcement yesterday was also talking about uh, the device activity that we are running with uh, MCMC, whereby we have uh, uh, refurbishing devices and also distributing ah, that. Okay. And then there's also uh, uh, for the B40 category um, that you know the 180 and the 300 ringgit uh, mm. subsidies are also being given. Right. So there are some opportunities there for B40 to get connected. Mm. I think the government has really helped focus on how do you uh, do you build this um, level of affordability across. Mm and then be able to now bundle it with services, right? Because now you get the device, you need to have the connectivity. Yeah. Um, so it all sort of comes together, you know, Jandela coverage in the in urban and rural areas, mm. uh, switching from 3G to 4G. Devices. And then devices, yeah. right? And then making it affordable, making that reach. Uh, for us, it's also a role that we have to play in making sure that the channels are able to reach these customers. Mm. So you shouldn't only build channels that can cater for urban areas yeah. and suburban areas. You need to make sure that our channels are able to serve rural areas mm. Uh, so that people don't have to go too far out mm. to get the support that they need for these devices, yeah. uh, to also to buy these devices or to buy connectivity. Right. right. So we're running short of time, so we have two minutes left. So we just like to, uh, I, I, I know I had a question about internet safety. Perhaps you can touch on a very short before your closing remarks uh, to viewers. Yeah. So on cybersecurity, very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we spend a lot of time uh, as DG on, on uh, uh, with our brand to reach out to especially children mm. to make sure that they are protected on the internet. Yeah. We have a cyber safe program that has uh, been there for almost 10 years, yeah. uh, and we take it out to schools, mm. um, and also we, we drive inclusion uh, yeah. to make sure that people understand that while we take internet out uh, to the market and connectivity to the market, we also have a responsibility to make sure that we're protecting and educating, especially children, what they do's and don'ts are on, on the internet or social media. Right. And so we do an activity that we really are proud of. Uh, it's under the umbrella of Yellow Heart, yeah. uh, and we take that across uh, the whole country. Mm. Uh, there's a lot more to be done, also collaboration in this mm. space, uh, because um, the entire ecosystem uh, that supports this connectivity and content that goes on this connectivity mm. is also very, plays a big role in ensuring cyber saf safety. Right? And your closing message to Malaysians? Right. I think the Janela program is going to give um, a connectivity to, the, to Malaysians at every area of the country. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how we can actually make sure that that connectivity is used. Mm for productivity and economic growth of the country. Mm -hmm. So I totally s think that this is a great idea and we look forward to being able to connect more Malaysians mm -hmm. and connecting you to what matters most. Thank you so much, Alban, for sharing your insightful messages. We look forward to a better collaborative effort in order for us to together as one Malaysia uh, reach that goal. Uh, thank you again. We were speaking to Albert Muti, CEO of DG Telecommunications, sharing with us about how DG is connecting customers to what matters most. Now, there are ongoing efforts to set us on a path to having consistent and quality digital connectivity. The telco industry as a whole is committed to uplifting the quality of internet experience for the rakyat in support of Jandela. Now, Jandela's aspirations is to improve 4G connectivity across the nation, and this initiative will have long-term far-reaching impact to setting Malaysia on a path of being competitive and in step with closing that digital gap. Thank you once again for staying with us on The Nation's Jandela. I'm Elena Abla. 
You've been watching Brahma TV. Thanks and bye for now.